Right, hello everybody. Just going to attempt to show you how to track military planes on a radar site I use pretty much every day. The website you need to go to is called adsbexchange.com. So type that in your browser there, just like that, adsbexchange.com. Make sure you spell it correctly or it could end up on a different website and God knows what that could end up showing you. So get that right. And then you'll end up on a web page that looks like this. And what you want to do to get the actual radar to show up is where it says ADSBX Radar View. Hover over that with your mouse and click on Trap Tracking Map. Click that, and then the actual map will show up of the world. And um, it can default; it can detect where your ISP is um, located. So if you're using something like a VPN, you might end up the map might end up starting in a different place to where you think you are. So wherever the map ends up going to, all you've got to do is, I'm presuming you're using a mouse, so simply uh, left click on the map and drag. So all I'm doing, if I can't show you both things at the same time, so if I'm on the map, all I'm doing is left clicking on the mouse and then moving the mouse to my right and you can see it drags the entire map to the right. So that's all you've got to do. Um, it's very simple. I'll, I'll do it to show you what I'm talking about. So left click, left side of the mouse, hold that down, and while it's still held down, drag the map on your desk or whatever. And as you can see, you drag the mouse to the right, the map moves. So simple as that. That's how to move it. And if you want to zoom in on an area on the map, all you do is use the scroll wheel on your mouse, move that forward, and you zoom in on an area on the map. So, for example, you want to find what's going on flying over Cambridge. You keep zooming, keep zooming, keep zooming. You can zoom in a huge amount. I'll zoom in on Cambridge Airport. Let's just see how and what detail you can get to. Yeah, that's pretty phenomenal, really. Just how much you can keep zooming in. There must be a limit to how much you can zoom in. The runway is over 50 meters wide at Cambridge. So, if I zoom in, that's showing you an area that's 50 meters wide. You can still keep going, keep going, keep going. Surely there's a limit. Nope, it just seems to keep on going. There you go, it stopped now. That's crazy. I don't know what scale that's gone down to, but that's probably about one meter. Um, so pretty phenomenal, but you're, not, you're never going to need to go down to that level. Anyway, so now you know how to move the map around to where you want to go to. So for example, let me just zoom out. When you load up the site, it's going to show you civilian aircraft and military aircraft. Um, and don't get confused by colours. A different colour doesn't mean it's a different type of plane. Down the bottom right, they've got a colour scale here, and that's to show you heights of planes. So the lower a plane is, the more orangey it is. As it gains a little bit of height, it'll get to yellow. A little bit higher, it's going to be green. Green into blue, it's, it's at height. When it's purple or pink, it's really high up. So as you can see, 30,000 feet. Most planes when you're flying on holiday, you would fly at about 36,000 feet. 36,000 feet to 40,000 feet. Okay, that's your cruising altitude, so about seven miles up. So there you go, that's as simple as that. So the colours of planes relate to their height. So just by looking at that, it's possible to work out what planes are going to be flying at. So for example, say you're in Cambridge, if I saw a plane that was in purple or blue there, heading in that direction, I'd know I'd be able to see that in about five, six minutes. That's all it takes to go from there to there. About 50, 60 miles it'll do in literally five, six minutes. So don't zoom in too much. You want to be able to see what's coming over you on a day that is not cloudy. If it's cloudy, then forget about what I've just said. You can't see anything at height. But the stuff that's lower down, say below a couple of thousand feet, that's orangey, you may be able to see. So again, I'll, using Cambridge as an, as an example, there's planes that are some distance away. Now, what happens is when you, when you hover your mouse over a plane, the information information about it shows up. Reg stands for registration. So just like your car's got a number plate, planes have a registration so that they're all unique in case you spot one, in case air traffic controllers need to speak to them, etc. So that's the registration of the plane. Using that, if you wanted to, you could type that into Google. Also type in the type of plane it is. So in this case, it's a P32, I know that's a Piper PA, blah blah blah. But um, 
and, and you can find out more information about it. You can find it's amazing how much information you can find about a plane based on just its registration. So use that if you ever want real detail on a plane. It also tells you its altitude in feet, so 2,100 feet. Speed in knots. Now I I use miles an hour for most things, so um, it gets a little confusing when they show you things in knots. But it's uh, I'll show you a way to work that out. And um, that's all you need to know about that. So hovering over a plane, and then if you actually click on a plane, let's click on that. The call sign is the plane air traffic control is used to speak to. Um, a plane so I know RYR is Ryanair so I'll click on that plane if you actually click on a plane with your mouse a load of information appears on the left hand side of the um, radar site so now you've got the call sign of the plane there RYR 961R the hex code is like a unique um, bit of information that again helps um, air traffic controllers etc to know a, what a unique plane is um, there you go, there's a registration that E-I-E-K-P is the registration. Where it says Ireland, that means it's the plane is registered to Ireland. So Ryanair registered that plane as being out of Ireland or based in Ireland, something like that. Type means the type of plane, so that's a Boeing 737-800 series. There's no such thing as a Boeing 738. Again, lots of things get abbreviated in aviation, which gets rather confusing until you learn about them. But then you've got more of it. There you go, Boeing 737 dash 8AS. So that's the type of aircraft. They cost about $100 million each. Um, I won't go into too much detail. You'll get confused with it all. And so will I. <laughs> Trying to explain it all. Vertical rate is obviously how much the plane is going up or down. At the moment that plane is climbing. And if you have a look, if you follow the trail back from, from where it is, it's only just taken off from stances. So it's gaining height. And obviously when you're gaining height, you're also gaining speed. And again, the coloured line shows you height. So that you, you don't only get to see what colour, what heights planes are like that. If you click on it, you can actually see what height the plane was at at certain points over the maps, which is brilliant. So you can see when they take off. Um, oh, and I, just to explain, I've already got some settings on here. So over on the right hand side. Let's get rid of that. So let's click on a plane that's just taken off. If you click on it at the moment, you just get a coloured line from it. Can you notice that there's no written information being written either side of it? Now, if you go and click on K on the side, now you'll get the time, you'll get the speed in knots, so 30 knots when it was on the ground at 5.58 p.m. So, and if you keep zooming in, you'll get more details as it moved. So it went out and it taxied around, it took off from that runway there. And then, then you've got, um, so speed in knots is the first bit of information. Then you've got the height in feet, so 1,075 feet, and then the time at 6.02 p.m. So if you, so using the K button, you can find out what height a plane was and what speed at what time over the map. So using the K button is useful. Another useful thing is sometimes when you're looking at something on a the map, there's so many other planes in the way, you get confused. It's useful if you could get rid of those other planes, and yes, you can. So all you've got to do is go over there and click on I for isolate, and then look, all the other planes disappear other than the one you've clicked on. Okay, so that's how to isolate a plane if you want to study one plane in detail without getting confused with other planes getting in the way. Okay, so now you're, now you're tracking that Ryan airplane there. Registration is over there, E-I-G-X-L. Now this is, I'm showing you how to use this on ADSB Exchange. And the reason I'm showing ADSB Exchange is because I wanted you to see how to find military planes on here. So I'm just going to get rid of, so to get rid of isolate, click on the I again and all the other planes will come back. Now, lots of people are either, either into just military planes or into civilian planes. A lot of people are not interested in civilian planes, so all you've got to do to get rid of all the civilian stuff is click on the U button up the top right, click on U, and look at that. All the civilian planes have just disappeared from the map. Now it's only showing, that this is how to get to military planes, okay? So now, obviously not all military planes show up on radar sites. Some have a way of um, keeping themselves secret, turning off certain transponders. 
but for the average person that's interested there's more than enough stuff shows up so just do a quick have a look around that that looks interesting to me let's click on that what have we got now that's a Eurofighter Typhoon so just from the registration ZK that's a RAF plane and look at that that's coming back let's have a look let's follow the trail so move the map drag the map and that appears to have taken off from southern France somewhere keep moving the, the map in it's not uh, now it was at 17,000 planes don't take off at 17,000 feet so you got to realize they, they don't often track them when they're low down so that's that's only being a track from that point so somewhere it's taken off south of here could it have been there I don't know could it have been that airport there and what is the airport so you keep moving in there you go it could well have come out there now the problem with ADSB's maps is the maps are in a different language it's not just over France I don't know what what map service they're using um, but it can be a real pain so over England I understand English so over England you've got the English town names city names I can understand that some of the bigger names on the map you'll still be able to understand Rotterdam Amsterdam um, but then it gets rather confusing when you go further afield uh, let's just show you for example so you see how they've written Turkey that's not how you spell Turkey in English I'm not sure what mapping they've used and again Cyprus is written like that Kibris and then it gets really confusing so you know over Israel look at that what is that type of writing called uh, and what I don't know I just don't know what map so it's not perfect by any means over Egypt you see I mean it's hard to tell where a plane is. so say I wanted to explain to someone where that plane was how would I say that how would I tell you that plane is over what town I can't tell you what the town that is so if you really wanted to explain to some somebody where a plane was so for example I'm going to use that as an example I can see that that plane is near Egypt and it's south of Cyprus so what I'm going to do I'm going to switch to now you need to go open up another browser tab in your in your computer um, and I'm going to go to earth.google.com load up load up that in your browser earth.google.com and then you'll get a map showing Go to the left hand top, click on where those three lines are, which is the menu. Click on menu and you get these options down here. Um, and then where it says map style, click on map style. And then it gives you options. It starts off on clean, no borders, no labels. So the map looks like that. How are you supposed to find anything if they don't tell you where, if they don't show you where roads are and place names? So that's confusing to me. So what you want to do is click on everything. And as soon as you click on everything, roads start to show up, city names start to show up. Now that becomes much more helpful to finding places. So once you've clicked on everything, go back to where it says map style, click on that arrow to get rid of that bit off the side. Now, move this map in the same way as I showed you earlier. So you just scroll your map wheel, the scroll wheel on your mouse, sorry. Drag the map to get to where you want. Now, I just showed you that, that plane was somewhere near Egypt and south of Cyprus didn't I so what you do is you try and match up this map to the map on ADSB exchange so now I'm going to go back to ADSB exchange and that was the wrong one ADSB exchange so over the coast now let's have a look you see there's no place names in English that I could use to help me but look for that shape on the map okay look for those land shapes on the map and let's see if we can find that so two little inner lakes and it's east of that so let's now go from ADSB exchange go to Google Earth zoom in more on the map there you go I found those two inner lakes that must be those two lakes there so this is Google Earth so if I was to explain to somebody where that plane was I'd say it was near to Zarenik okay um, and then if you zoom out you'll be able to see what country that is hopefully so that's got to be part of presumably that's part of Egypt there yeah so Egypt so east of Cairo west of Israel 
So that's that's how to use the maps if you're trying to work out where something is. You have to switch from ADSB Exchange, go and have a look around on Google Earth in the same area of the map, and then you'll come up with the rough area. So that's one major flaw with ADSB Exchange. Um, so there you go, that's an RAF Airbus A400 military plane flying over Egypt at the moment, most likely heading towards Cyprus where the British have got a base. So, the main reason I was showing, making this video was to show people how to um, track the planes that are evacuating people from Kabul, Afghanistan. So, drag the map over towards India. India, I'm sure everybody can tell what shape India is on a map. Now, most people know that Pakistan is next to India, and then Afghanistan is next. And again, this is the difficulty with the maps on ADSB Exchange. They're written like that. I don't understand any of that. I can't tell you what any of those city names are. So, serious flaw with ASP exchange in that. But um, anyway, the stuff that's evacuating people from Afghanistan is currently flying out of Dubai and Kuwait and places like that. So these ones here are most likely involved in the evacuation. So that one there is a US military C-17 plane. Okay, there's a registration. And that has taken off, as you can see, from there, which I do believe is Q8. So let's have a look. So Dubai, let's go and look at what that shape is on Google Earth. So using Google Earth, let's move the map, move the map. Yes, Qatar is that shape there. So that's taken off from Qatar. So I'm going to go back to ADSB Exchange now. So. Um, and then you'll notice uh, different times of the day there'll be more planes. I've, unfortunately, there's just been a couple of explosions just outside the airport, I've been told. Um, so I don't know what that's doing for flights at the moment, whether lots of them are, are, are now suspended or whether they're still carrying on. It looks like there's still a few heading in that direction. So there's still that one there from the American military. At different times of the day, you'll see more activity. So maybe in a few hours' time, there'll be a lot more. Sometimes last couple of days I've seen eight or nine of these huge great transport planes heading towards Afghanistan and as you can see if I zoom out that one there where's that heading towards that's left oh I was just gonna say where's that come from so that's that's just left Germany that's heading down this way now it may stop in Qatar or Dubai oh there you go a few more have just shown up so you see these will be heading towards Kabul to evacuate people so there's that one there. C-17 is the type of plane, huge military plane. And the good thing about ADSB Exchange is quite often the icons are the correct shape for the type of plane. So you can see that's a four engine plane. It's a four engine jet, I know. Um, they're not perfect. Some Sometimes they get things a bit wrong. That there, that's a refueling tanker. So because these huge, great transport planes have been having to fly huge distances, they're getting um, fuel while in the air from these uh, what are called KC-135 uh, strata tankers. They're refueling tankers the US military use. So they top up the planes while they're in flight. So you can see, um, there's that. You've also got this. There's another one that's left Dubai. And you've got a third one. That's the one that's coming out of Qatar. Where did this one come from? Let's click on that. Let's see if it's doing anything. Ah. Oh. There we go. Um, that. And that. This shows another thing I was going to show you. The tracking quite often stops over parts of Afghanistan. They can't provide full tracking. You know, if, if you could, the line would go all the way up to Kabul. Um, the, the way this works is people have little electronic devices in their computers that uh, attach to their computers. They detect where planes are in the sky... Um, and then they feed the information they capture to this website called ADSB Exchange and using triangulation with other people that are also um, tracking the same flight that's how they manage to plot these little icons on the map to show you where planes are it's amazing how accurate it is most of the time um, occasionally they can be slightly off you know say within half a mile of where the plane actually is but I have to say most of the time they are very very accurate as to where the plane is but if I carried on filming for another 10 minutes or so, this would, this plane would probably disappear from the map 
uh, nobody is able to track it because nobody in this area has the equipment to track where the plane is. It doesn't mean the plane's crashed, it just means it can't be tracked if you see a plane disappear. So there you go, that's how to see where military planes are using ADSB Exchange. As I've said, the main flaw with ADSB Exchange is the maps, so quite often I end up having to use Google Earth to work out where, where a plane actually is, because I can't read that. Um, there are alternative websites to ADSB Exchange that also track military. I'm just going to very quickly show you that. One alternative is freedart.uk. I'll have to make another video to show you how to use freedart, otherwise the video will get far too long. But it's the same principle. Go to freedart, click on freedart live radar, and that will line up their radar. I'm not going to go into any more detail about freedart today. That's, that's another video I'll have to make. Another service to use if you want to see civilian stuff mostly is flightradar24.com. That's probably the most popular website for tracking civilian stuff. They do show some military though. So they are of use for people that are into military. So flightradar24.com. It's free to use. So again, you get a map like this. Downside to them is that all the planes are yellow. So you can't tell what height a plane is just by looking. You can obviously click on them and get information, but Anyway, I'm not going to go into any more detail about that, so that's another site, and I know loads of other radar sites. But anyway, that's my, what I would call a short guide to ADSB Exchange. It's just taken me over 20 minutes to do, but that's how to see where military planes are. And if I just zoom out, I'll just show you what else is being tracked around the world. Um, oh, another thing to show you, the weird thing is, ADSB Exchange recently started to try and show you where you are. I am not in Finland. It thinks I'm in Finland because of a, a computer service I use. So to wait to get rid of that, go up to that symbol up there. And then it's, it's your, your position. Uncheck that and get rid of range rings. Now it's not tracking where I am or where it thinks I am. I'm not in Finland. I'm in England. Um, and one other thing. If you're ever going to... Let's just click on something. Let's click on something over England quickly. Um, if you go to that cog wheel there, that's the settings wheel, so click on that. If you click on show pictures, then I'll just get rid of that. What they can do is they can show you a picture of what the plane looks like, and sometimes they'll actually show you a photo of the plane. Now, if, for example, you were going to use um, the Microsoft uh, snipping tool that looks like that, if you hover over it, it'll actually say, uh, where does it say? Oh, never mind. Uh, but anyway, snipping tool, and then you can take a screenshot. It's like taking a photograph of your screen if you wanted to explain to somebody um, what you've seen. But the thing is, for copyright reasons, you might not want to show the actual photograph. So if I took an entire picture of the screen and that the photograph was there, somebody took that photograph, that somebody owns the copyright to it. I don't know whether you get into trouble for showing a little picture like that, but anyway, what I do is I switch off. Um, so I go to that cogwheel over there and deselect show pictures and then I'm free to take a screenshot of whatever you decide to look at and choose something different and then even though I've clicked on it there's no picture of it showing up okay and then I'd be able to use the snipping tool so there you go that's my my what I would call a short version of how to use ADSB Exchange and what I was going to quickly show one minute last minute of this I'm just going to zoom out and show you what can be tracked so it's not just England and Europe and parts of the Middle East. America is probably the best best reason for using ADSB Exchange. Look at that. The amount of military that flies over America at any given time is unbelievable. I can just spot just there. Oh, just just so I went near it disappeared. There's a B-52 there. Um, B-52 bomber that can carry nukes etc. Uh, so you can see some amazing stuff. America's got some of the best military aircraft in the world. There's a B-52. That huge blue symbol area over Texas. I've been near there. I've been Midland, Odessa. Okay, so that's a B-52 bomber. Right, anyway, there you go. That's my guide to ADSB Exchange. That's how to see where military stuff is on the map. Um, any questions, leave a question on the video. And lastly, if you go to Reddit, reddit.com, go to that website there, ADSB Exchange. There's a group for ADSB Exchange on there. If you join that group, you can ask questions about how to use um, ADSB Exchange how to feed to it, 
etc um, etc et so that's one way to contact them ASB exchange has also got if I um, go back to the ADSB exchange where it's just like that on here they've got a forum so join that forum if you've got any questions about how to use ADSB exchange okay feeding if you want to learn how to feed how to capture information and send it to the map blah 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 anyway thank you for watching folks bye bye